Hi class, Mr. Goyette here with AP US History. Um, just finished a video only to realize that I that hadn't saved it, um, hadn't captured it correctly. But what we'll be going over today um, for Unit 3, or sorry, Unit 2, be chapters 19 and 20. And what we're focusing in on right now is um, Toward an Urban Society, 1877 to 1900. And um, the second. Uh, for 19, for chapter 20 to be uh, political rail alignments of the 1890s. Um, and what I'm going to go over for the most part is, is what you'll be looking for um, to study for the quizzes and get ready for the AP exam in May. Um, some of the key topics though that we're looking at right now. Uh, in the 1870s, uh, there were several fires that went through Chicago and the Great Fire of Chicago actually changed how architecture was um, approached. Um, there have been many awards given out for these um, uh, new uh, tenement designs and because they pack so many people in one place and um, that was great for um, being able to have a lot of uh, dense populations in one place and a lot of rents coming through for those building owners but the negatives in some of these designs were that um, if they were ornate in any way, if they had a lot of um, external wood structures um, and cornices and, and um, uh, uh, ornate um, trellis work, what would happen is they, that would be the first um, thing to catch on fire in these big fires and it would just fuel these raging fires. So in 1871, Chicago art architects Root and Sullivan designed buildings that were stripped down. They were plain in style, bold in mass and form. And the key w there was to get rid of the ornate external structures, the extra showy stuff that was on the buildings to make them emulate classic designs of either the Greco-Roman um, architecture. Uh, James E. Ware won a competition in this ten in this new tenement design. Uh, however, um, it would become uh, uh, somewhat of a ironic award. His um, tenement for 34 room apartments on a lot of only 25 by 100 feet uh, was awarded and uh, the, in the indented middle of the building allowed the flow of light to come through and made it look airy. Um, so the halls um, and structures were, nor they were notorious for being fire traps, however, so the building design was called the Dumbbell Tenement. Dumbbell for its design, uh, its shape, but m also because uh, emphasizing dumb, the idea that it was a fire trap. Um, so it's easy kind of to remember. In the 1900s, most Americans lived in small towns and farms. The great move to um, uh, from the rural to the urban centers is going to happen later on in the 1920s. But right now, it's not until the 1920, 1920 did the census show that most Americans lived in cities. So still most people um, uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s are living in small towns and on farms. Um, what was the average life expectancy for Americans in 1900? About f uh, 47 years uh, for most, and but only f um, 45 years for African Americans. The average life expectancy for African Americans has historically been shorter than that of whites in the United States. Um, late 19th century reforms benefiting women included laws mandating that women control their own earnings. And while there were still reforms for um, the suffrage movement and still reforms to try to to um, have fairness in the mar in the workplace and equal wages for women, there was still not a, 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 that critical mass needed enough people in the work, enough women in the workplace to force that as a political issue. So they were still, there was still a lot of um, uh, pushing that aside and, and ignoring the um, uh, female, female demand to modernize. But the laws mandating that women control their earnings were um, coming into effect in many states. During the late 19th century, American women did not espouse fewer reforms than earlier generations. So they did not cool their heels in terms of wanting to improve rights for women in the United States. Educational changes, though, um, there was a um, compulsory school attendance law that started to pop up in many states. So you saw an increase in the requirement that states said that students should be or, or young people should be in school up until the age of 14 and in many states now of course that's 18 um, 
By 1900, 31 states and territories out of 51 had enacted laws making school attendance compulsory, that is, mandatory for those students. They must go, though most only required attendance until the age of 14. Um, which of the following arrangements and events in chronological order? Remember that the Morrill Land Act came before the establishment of the Tuskegee Institute, and the Plessy versus Ferguson is the last thing that you're going to review in that chapter, so you can kind of get a sense of the chronology there. Um, okay, let's see here. In response to, response to Booker T. Washington's policies of politi political passivity, Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. E. Du Bois had different approaches. Um, Booker T. Washington, um, in, as the first president of the Tuskegee Institute, felt that if you um, provide training and a work ethic and, a, and a prepare African Americans for the jobs that they, they will earn their place in the marketplace by hard work and training. And that was more or less his approach. W.E.B. E. Du Bois felt, how, though, felt that um, you could have those, that training and that ability, but because of the uh, second-class status of the African American in the South and many parts of the United States, that it would not mean that you would get the job. So W.E.B. Du Bois's position was one of activism and intellectual education to, that would see its culmination in the civil rights movement with Martin Luther King much later. The ideas of the English social philosopher Herbert Spencer combine the co concepts of Charles Darwin's um, book, The Origin of Species, to explain the slow pace of societal change. There was a lot of unrest about why are we still seeing these great pover um, impoverished centers. You know, here's industrialism, all these things we can do. Why do we still have the poor? Um, so in that case, uh, social Darwinism was this theory that um, some people are poor, and the reason they're poor is that that's part of the evolutionary process. They're not, they're not the fittest group, and they of course will be, will, their numbers will dwindle, and they will naturally fall by the wayside. Whereas now applying these directly, going from jumping from the origin of species to social Darwinism, did not mean, however, that um, you could have um, that, that Darwin w shared these views. In fact, he had nothing to do with social Darwinist theories. Um, one of the books said to be responsible for in, in opposing this was the ideas of Henry George. And what he, he said was that um, he was a uh, child born in the 1830s, and he worked really hard um, to overcome his poverty. And he said that poverty would become a thing of the past um, and even though he was a self-taught man, he felt that um, the only way society was going to change is, is if the government stepped in. And that's going to lead to the reform movement in the United States in the 1880s. That's also going to be in the quiz. The other thing you're going to see there is um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Um, oh, wait, going back to Henry George. His book is called Progress and Poverty. You're going to need to know that. Um, and which of the following authors argue that the American ideal of women's innocence really meant their ignorance. The idea that, oh, the nice, quaint um, housewife staying at home, keeping herself confined to the kitchen and the living room, and uh, was their um, sublime innocence in American tradition. Actually, what Charlotte Perkins Gilman was beginning to say in her book, Women in Economics, was that that was really, um, that what that really meant was keeping them ignorant. Um, and so this is the beginning of a more uh, bold, way of saying, okay, women should have a place not only in the workplace, but outside the home. And her famous story, um, The Yellow Wallpaper, is a um, kind of allegory of that, um, and uh, uh, qu quite a negative one for the main character who is trapped in this yellow wallpaper of society. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm going to stop it here because these run about nine minutes long, and I'll continue up with the second half here shortly. So. Um, APUS history students, stay tuned. I'll be right back with you.